to talk about because last week CPAC proved once again that organizer Matt Schlapp, that's him, is not afraid to stir up controversy. And it seems even I made an on screen appearance at this year's conference. How nice. That's very good. I just hope my hair looked good. Did he look good? Fabulous. All right, so please welcome the chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp. Hi, Matt. Thank you. Now, you guys have nothing better to talk about than me, really. Come on. But um, <laughs> you guys have been, the, the CPAC has been attracting more extremist fringe elements of late, right? I don't agree with that, of Okay, course. you invited far-right French politician Marianne Le Pen to speak. Her grandfather is that horrible Marie, Marie Le Pen, Jean-Marie Le Pen, who's That's a great. Holocaust denier. A hateful guy who's disowned his own... <laughs> Uh, granddaughter because she has uh, separated herself from his hateful politics and we think that's a good thing. That's not true. She's, a year ago she proclaimed herself the political heir of Jean-Marie Le Pen to the Washington Post. She has the last name. She's not going to change that part of her family lineage but in America we judge the person on what they say and we believe that her message of separating herself from some of these policies uh, in France that I, I, I quite frankly completely disagree with. Uh, did you watch her speech? A little bit. It's a good speech. It's exactly the kind of message American conservatives like. Okay, but you also have some other uh, extremist people on there. I want white nationalists. I won't. You know go I'm going to gonna disagree, names. but go, go. Well, I can start naming them, but they take forever. There's so no. many of them. Um, the question is, is, does this fringe group represent the, your party now? It, look, it's a fair question, and I think yeah. we ought to just take it on. If <laughs> someone is a hateful, racist person. We don't want them there. When Richard Spencer, who is a neo-Nazi, KKK, Got rid of him. we kicked him out. I, I called our lawyers right over and said, I know it's America, but we're paying all the bills in this hotel. Can we kick him out? But we you don't... invited Milo also. And disinvited him because some tapes came forward that were, quite honestly, on questions of equal opportunity in America. This is not a political discussion Milo anymore. had been f very hateful m much before the tapes came out. It, the tapes made it undeniable and the tapes were about pedophilia. That's right. Which was a, an entirely different thing. Yep. But he, w he was hateful before you invited mm -hmm. him. He was a ha hateful pedophile when you disinvited him. He's not a pedophile. Let me be okay. clear about that. Okay. He had, he had tapes but look, that we did the right, talked about pedophilia. I feel like we did the right thing. When the information came forward, we disinvited him. We took a lot of heat. Nobody was happy with the situation. But I think we also have to acknowledge that things are awfully messy politically in our country these days. And what we try to do at CPAC is put the controversies on the stage and try to talk through them. Now, we have a conservative perspective, there's no question. I reject that it's fringe, I, I reject that it's racist or hateful. And when we do something that's wrong, call us out on it, okay? Because our goal is to get the left and the right to talk better with each other. Well, that's why I'm here you, today. You, that's why I'm you, here. But how do you put the, together the fact that Trump calls me as Mexicans rapists and says a lot of things n nasty against immigrants with what you just said? Wait, let me interject on this, if you don't mind, sure. because it, it's more than just that. So. I know you, Matt. I know yes. you have a lovely wife. Yes. My husband interviewed Ted Cruz yes. at CPAC this year, and I thought they both did a wonderful Great. job. I don't see CPAC in a vacuum. And I enjoyed a lot of the speeches that, uh, that I watched online. I have a lot of friends that were there. I have to tell you, when President Trump called out my dad and led a crowd of booing, I was so upset. I was so hurt. I know it's about policy. I don't understand why Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski aren't also brought up if you want to talk about the Obamacare vote. I also don't understand with, despite, I'm aware my father's never even been invited to speak at CPAC. I know he's not a conservative darling, but why at this moment when he's suffering from the worst brain cancer that exists and going through chemo, why there can't be a modicum of respect for my family at this moment from CPAC? It's a very good point. And you defended it on Twitter, and I was disappointed. I know your wife well. You're good people. Let him answer. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah look, your, your, your father is a national hero. He has served his country. He's uh, fought for his life before, and he's fighting for his life now. And I think we all respect that. My conversations, when I talk about your dad, with what he's going through, is just to keep him in our prayers. Um, the fact is, is also, you know, he has spoken at CPAC in the past. He spoke when he was the nominee of the party. He's spoken before that. You know, he actually spoke at CPAC right after he was released from the, his terrible uh, imprisonment. So, uh, you know, and Anna, you've spoken at CPAC. A lot of people have spoken mm -hmm. at CPAC. If people have a disagreement with how I'm running the organization, ask the questions. I know that there are some tough questions to ask, and I'll answer them. But as far as your dad is concerned, I do think there is a disagreement on policy questions. Let's keep it to policy. He is a good man now, that has that follows his I would, I would have really loved for you to, and I would have applauded you had you said that I on did, stage at CPAC.
one of the people that booed John McCain. As you said, a national hero who was, and the, that crowd was getting stirred up to boo him by a guy who dodged the draft five times, man. I, uh... Come on. Can I, can I try yeah. to answer that question? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, so why answer. didn't Here. you get up on stage and do it in front of that people? The way not, not this audience. The way John McCain <laughs> done it. I have As no... he has. <laughs> I have. Yeah. I'll say it right to your face, Megan. I have a lot of respect for you, too, and I for your family. I think it's okay in America to disagree with someone's votes in the Senate. I do, too. And, you know, I talked to your dad when he was up for re-election last time, and he told me he was going to lead the charge against Obamacare. For whatever so, reason, he, he followed his conscience. What about Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins? Then? We did invite why, them. But why aren't they brought up in... If you're going to say, okay, like, this Obamacare... But I'm well aware of how controversial it was. Right. And again, I'm well aware that my father is not a conservative darling, never has been, never will be. But I just don't understand... Well, he was the deciding the vitriol vote. At, he was the deciding vote. He was the deciding vote. I, I, I have ahead. a question, okay. because... Yeah. You, you know, you seem very lovely. You're a Notre Dame grad like I am. You're a Catholic a thing, like right? I am. It's okay. a good thing. Right. Um, but I, frankly, was very disappointed um, in what I heard. Your CPAC spokesman, Ian Walters, made some racially charged comments about former RNC chairman Michael Steele, mm. saying he only got the job because he was a black guy. Now, we know that he was the lieutenant governor of Maryland. He was a Republican Party state chairman for Maryland. He was, he was the head of the grassroots organization, GoPack. So he was very qualified. Um, but still, you know, Michael took offense, and I know Michael as well, and he Me got too. into a heated exchange with you mm -hmm. about it. Let's take a look at that. It is stupid to sit there and say that we elected a black man chairman of the party and that was a mistake. But it, do, you, do you know how that sounds to the black community? Yes, I know. And do you know how that sounds to Americans? I do. I do. And do you know how they then equate that level of stupidity to conservatism? That's, me, that's the objection I have about the moment. Don't take yeah. the worst out of what he said. You know him. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> this is where you need to have some grace. Look at what Wait a minute. Wait, what the hell do I have to be graceful for? <laughs> be graceful for. <laughs> My, what was not known at the time is that when Ian, who's with today mm -hmm. and is a dark-skinned conservative who has mm -hmm. strong opinions about the Republican Party's failure to reach out to diverse populations in an effective way, he wants them to be better. He was called up to the stage in a spontaneous way, and, he, and by his, if you read his article that he wrote in The Hill, he used the words that came to him at the moment. He doesn't give speeches, and he wishes he could have sat down and thought through the words he would have used. Well, yeah, I but, did read but that he did article. Call Michael. He did call Michael and apologize what, immediately. But, but I did That's read the I article, and he stepped away from it and said, no, I'm talking about Michael being unsuccessful. I'm talking about the job that he did. Then why did he call him a black guy, and why did you think that Michael needed to be more graceful about it? Because when someone... Uh, I just, I just wanted people to know the full story that Ian actually felt bad because it was never about. But if why Michael, did you if my, say that he should be graceful about it? Because Ian called and asked him if he would accept this apology. Did you take, why, did you take any not? action against the guy who yeah. talk, called Michael Steele basically a token black? I will not oh. tell my dark-skinned colleague in my where I work that he's not allowed to have a point of view on these racial questions we have in society. Shutting people down is the wrong way to handle this. Isn't I respect the right way him, to handle and I let him by talk. shutting down so, racism? So you think that's not the right way to handle it? Absolutely. Then why did you do that? Because... Why did you do that? To be a little bit more unequivocal when it comes to shutting down racism, yeah, to Sonny's why point. Why did you do that? Because when... when You're someone... a Notre Dame Catholic. That's what we're called upon to do. <laughs> You're right. Father Hesburgh uh, played Father, a big role in all those things. Yes, and he's Father a hero Hesburgh of mine. did. And the question is this. When we see racism, we call it out. I believe Ian. Time. I believe Ian, as someone who has his own experiences with his skin color, has the right to have a point of view. He has admitted Does that he Does he have the right to be racist? No, talking about race is not racist. <laughs> all right, That's our problem. I'm going to have to cut this down. This was a tough room, I think, for you. <laughs> he has five daughters. I, I, I know. This is, this is like my dinner table. I,